Today on The Five Guys, we're going to be uncovering Don Quixote's book, The Ten Commandments of Business Failure. It was Charlie Bunger that once said, the best way to learn is to invert. So instead of studying exactly what you need to do to have a successful business, let's go ahead and invert the problem, see what you need to do in order to fail a business so that you know not to make the same exact mistakes. This is The Five Guys. Let's get started. So Dominic, Warren Buffett once said, I like to study failure. We want to see what caused business to go bad. So today we're going to be talking about all about Don, Don Keogh's book, The Ten Commandments of Business Failure. And in case you don't know, Don Keogh was actually the uh, CEO of Coca-Cola for a long time and a chairman of the board of Berkshire Hathaway. And then even Warren Buffett wrote the forward to his book, The Ten Commandments of Business Failure. Unfortunately, Don passed away in 2015. Um, but his book still stays along with us. And it's one of Warren Buffett's required readings. Mm, interesting. I didn't know Warren Buffett had a, had a reading list. So I might have to check that out. <laughs> yes, okay. I would definitely recommend checking it out. If you want to learn more about like Warren Buffett and more about him, I would definitely recommend going to his shareholder letters for Berkshire Hathaway and reading. You can read every single year from the day that it was started until modern day. I think 2023 was the last one they have. Maybe put out 2024 by now. I'm not sure. Um, but if you read those every single year, you get to see his progression on thought as things go through. And you yeah. also get to see every single blunder that Berkshire Hathaway had as well. And, you know, one thing I would always attest to Warren and Charlie is rather than trying to minimize their mistakes, they would always just sit up there and say, this is where we screwed up because it's not an issue to be wrong, but it is an issue to stay wrong. Fair, fair. I like that. I like, I like working from, uh, from the back, like reverse engineering it. It's kind of interesting. Maybe we should do, I know we did a podcast on Charlie Munger and uh, Warren Buffett's longtime business partner. Maybe we should do a podcast on Warren himself. Yeah, that'd be a good one. One I was thinking about doing that might be fun is do one on, um, I told you that there's three part. there was actually three partners of Berkshire <laughs> Hathaway when they started. Yes. Charlie Warren and uh, and his, I think his last name was Rick something with a G. Maybe I was thinking we'll do Rick a podcast G. on him. <laughs> we'll do nice. one on Rick G and, yeah. and what happened to his failure. And we could do one on um, Warren, but I prefer to wait till people are past because I want to know their entire life before we go and like start talking about what's going on. There's already a lot of videos about Warren too that are already made, but I'm gonna do a quick Charlie Munger quote too. If we were ordering or ordaining rules for running boards of directors, I'd require that three hours be, said, be spent on examining stupid blunders. Hmm. Stupid blunders. So this, That's interesting. This is, yeah, this is exactly what, uh, what Don's talking about. One time he was asked for, uh, by a business student, what things do I need to do to have a successful business? Mm -hmm. And Don's response was, I don't know what you need to do to have a successful business because so much of it has to do with timing and luck, but I can tell you what you need to do to fail at business. So that's what, that was the whole premise for him writing this book. And then this book now telling everyone that if you do these things, especially if you're doing multiple of these things, it's not always guaranteed, but more than likely you are going to run your own business to the ground. So I said, we get into those things so that you can realize that hey, maybe I'm making a few of these mistakes. What can I do to right the ship before I sink the ship? Yeah, absolutely. Because nobody wants to sink a ship, especially when it's a very publicly, very public thing. You know, you start a business and you tell your friends and family about it and then it implodes and you're like, wow, I, I look terrible. So yeah, yeah. if we can avoid that altogether, that would be super great. So what, what can we learn? I'm excited. Let's, let's hop into the book. What can we learn, Chris? Yeah, for sure. So I say, before we get into that, I'm going to do one Don Quixote book that I really like. A company okay. doesn't fail at anything. Individuals do. Mm. I think when we think about companies, most people are thinking of this pie in the sky. There is this large company and they're overseeing everything. But you have to remember that a company is just an amalgamation of all the people within it. So it's there's no company that is failing at these things. It is individual people within these companies that are failing at everything. More likely it's the CEO, the CEO, the COO, the CFO, but if you're a small business owner and you're watching this, you're that person. It's not the business that's failing. It is you that's failing. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because a business is just comprised of people, right? Yep. It's not just machines. Yeah. Despite what if, people like to think, yeah, business reflects the personal characteristics of their leaders. Yeah. Jocko Absolutely. quote of the day. Jocko quote. We love a good job. We we haven't rescued. We haven't uh, we haven't said any Jocko quotes recently. No, we haven't. Well, we'll get to extreme ownership. We'll, we'll get extreme on ownership. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got to take extreme ownership of our you know, accountability and being our Navy SEAL selves. But um, yeah, okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now I feel more amped after just summoning Jocko in his aura. Yeah, you know? yeah, he is, he is here with us. 
So let us, let us let us cheer him. Before we get into the Ten Commandments, I do want to mm-hmm. say that Keo's commandments are not groundbreaking rules at all. They're going to sound very, very basic to most people that are hearing this. They're going to say, yeah, that's Chris, that's common sense. But failure often stems from violating multiple of the commandments and not realizing that you're doing it. How often in life do we go through and we're doing something over and over and over again that we know is leading us to ruin? Maybe we're just sitting around mindlessly eating candy. And if someone mm-hmm. asks you, why are you eating that candy? You're like, I-, I don't know. I'm just eating it. And it's that mindlessness that gets us to where failure ultimately is, which yeah. for that is going to be, you're not going to be a healthy person. No. no, unfortunately not. I wish maybe there's a healthy candy we can really dive into to get that best of both worlds. But yeah, I mean, if we're talking about easy kind of common sense, dumb, dumb things for uh, the rules for this book, I'm all for it because yeah. I feel like every now and again, I'll miss one or two. So yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. I, I know all of these ones. Maybe a few will surprise myself and the viewer as well. So let's get, can we get it? Is it, is, is it time? Yeah, it's time. Let's and the big it. thing I want you to take on this, Dominic, is that we're both business owners. So yes. let's take what I'm teaching you here and apply it to our own businesses. And let's ask questions on that so that our listener can hear it and be like, hey, that's something that I'm doing for my business. So anytime that I give a commandment, I'm doing the opposite of what I want you to do. So I'm going to give you a commandment as if I want your business to fail. So whatever okay. I say, invert it, okay? Opposite. Okay. So, yes. If you want to fail your business, quit taking risks. So you want me to take more risks? Yes. Comfort yeah. in your position can lead to risk aversion. And if you have risk aversion, you're no longer taking the necessary jumps to continue to move your company. Mm. I'd like you to think about um, Amazon. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, the reason that Amazon is Amazon, because Jeff Bezos has said in his shareholder letters that he is terrified every single day, or was when he was a CEO, every single day that Amazon was going to go under. So every single day, he was constantly looking for ways to reiterate, to make his company better, to make it better and better and better. When Amazon first started, it was literally a book selling company out of a garage in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Now it is Amazon Prime, it is Amazon Fresh, and it is AWS, a cloud servicing company. That's their three largest producers. A book selling company is now one of the largest cloud database companies ever because Jeff Bezos refused to stop taking risks because he was terrified that one day everything's, the buck's going to stop and he has to continue to reiterate to figure out what the next step in his business evolution is going to be. So we like, we like risk when it comes to business. Controlled risk. Okay. Okay. I think, yeah. Before. It's very important that every single thing that I ever talk about, there mm-hmm. is two extremes. Mm-hmm. If I say you need to take more risk, one of these other ones is also taking too much risk. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's always a balance, right? But yeah. what I'm trying to say here is businesses that fail to adapt to changing environments are never going to succeed. Do you uh, do you know NVIDIA? Yeah, NVIDIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So NVIDIA. Yeah. Yeah, one of the biggest companies in the world right now, one of the highest stocks. I think their market cap is like more than most countries at this point. Yeah. The CEO of NVIDIA has constantly said that he and his management team are basically running the company as if NVIDIA is 30 days out from going to solve it. And it's that tenacity of being fearful that no matter what we do, we're going to fail. So we have to keep on trying to get better. That has led them to be one of the largest companies in the world. Dang, 30 days? That, that, that's, that's what he says. I don't know if that, that's yeah. what he's running it, as if we only have 30 days to fix this ship. Even though the ship is going in the right direction, they yeah. are constantly trying to reiterate and say, what can we do to make sure that we're taking the right kind of risk to move our business? Forward? That's crazy. That's a very like startup mentality. I see why they're mm-hmm. so successful. Yeah, that makes that and, makes. And think about Amazon. Like when Amazon mm-hmm. was was Amazon, and it was huge, and it was the biggest retailer in the world. It then went off and made Amazon Fresh. It also yep. made AWS, and then who knew? Then it also made like a cell phone provider, which totally failed. It tried a bunch of things that failed, but now we know the biggest thing that Amazon makes its money from is from its cloud services. Yeah, that was something that was completely a risk, completely something new that they went in full headed, and it worked out. They also went full headed into their cell phone business, and it failed, but it's okay because they took control risk they didn't burn all the boats to go in one direction but they kept on trying to reiterate that's smart that's smart okay so we calculated risk Mm -hmm. calculated calculated risk risk. that's number one if you want to fail in business quit taking risks you must always continue to grow and adapt number two if you want to fail in business be inflexible so that he's going to want you to be flexible then yes 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So basically what he's saying with that is like markets are going to change. People's wants and needs are going to change. You have to adapt. To people. Of course, a refusal to change when your strategies aren't working will lead to your failure. I'd like yeah. you to think a little bit about um, newspapers. So newspapers were like, this is the way that people do their meeting. The only way that they're going to read and learn about the world through news is by reading newspapers. Mm -hmm. well, then radio came along and TV came along and people started yeah. watching and listening to their news through that way. But newspapers never adapted. And then they started failing. And then what newspapers have to do, they had to start changing. They had to start adding in crossword puzzles and different things to bring people back to the news because mm -hmm. the world had changed. Yeah. Um, Think if you're maybe running like a CPA practice or if you're a financial advisor or whatever you're doing and you're still operating your business as if it was 1999, you're still only making phone calls. You're still sending things through fax. You're like, hey, you need something to beep me on my beeper. If you're still in that age, you're running a very old practice and it's not going to succeed in this modern world. You have to adapt. And I know it's hard, especially with when it comes to, you know, learning new technologies, figuring all those things out and right-sizing your business mm -hmm. by adapting new technology. But without that, it's going to lead to your failure. You must yeah. be flexible in business. Yeah. No, I mean, that makes, makes a ton of sense. I mean, it's makes sense. I nothing to say there. I'm going to say there. So, yeah. so far we have quit, you know, if you want to fail, quit taking risks. If you want to fail, don't be flexible. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I can okay. think about that from, from like my own standpoint of running my business, Monza on Wealth. When I first started, I was thinking, hey, the one way that I'm going to grow my business is by word of mouth. You know, I'm going to go, I was taught, like, you need to go door to door. You need to just keep on meeting people, meeting people, meeting people, and keep on trying to sell yourself. And had I stayed inflexible and just said, that's the only way, because that's what I was taught originally, I would never be where I am today because I became flexible and said, the way that I'm going to grow my business isn't mm -hmm. by word of mouth, isn't by just approaching people and trying to sell them this pen, as it were, and make them buy something from me. Yeah. It was by teaching people, by running the podcast, by you know, getting curious about people rather than trying to sell them something. So always got to be <laughs> flexible, always got to adapt. I mean, that's what came, that's what created this podcast. And yeah. you know, it's doing quite well is because of that. I know. I was just looking at our statistics and we just passed, uh, I think it was, was it 250,000 views? Yeah, we're, yeah, it's it's growing, man. It's growing. It's growing. Okay, so being flexible, very, very important. Very important. If you want to survive, not even at the top, just if you want to survive as a business. Yeah. Okay, okay. And okay, I'm learning. Everything, everything is a dichotomy, and the goal is to find the middle way for every single one of this. You can also find yourself being too flexible, where like you're, yeah. you're willy-nilly you're changing your business model all the time. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. You wouldn't want to just pander all the time, 24-7. Got to stand yeah, on something. Unfortunately, we've seen some companies do that, right? Well, they'll flip-flop mm -hmm. constantly. and They'll say, oh, mm -hmm. this is what we're for today. And then the market turns against them. No, we're for this today. And I'm not saying you shouldn't flip-flop because I, I don't like that, that term flip-flop because as new information presents itself, you'd be silly yeah. to say, no, no, no. I've already said this before. You need to change, but you need yeah. to make control change. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I, I would agree with that 100%. Okay. Okay, so what else we got? What's the next rule? Next rule, if you want to fail your business, is isolate yourself as the owner, the manager, the CEO. You know, I've noticed with so far the three rules, they're almost like rules for life as well, you know? Bro, I'll tell you, running a business has taught me more about running my own life and being a better person than pretty much anything else. That and like getting physically fit yes. has taught me more about anything and, and investing. All of them have taught me like how to be better every single day. And all of this can be applied to pretty much anything in life. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love when two things work for two different things. I love that. So number three was isolate yourself, correct? Yeah, isolate yourself. So I think there was, uh, I think it's a Warren Buffett quote that says, it's really hard to learn about the world from your desk. Mm. It's impossible to view the world from your desk. So sometimes you need to get out there and you need to see what's actually going on. And it's very dangerous to what most CEOs do is they try to, surround themselves with yes men. And do you know what a yes man is? Yes. I have no idea. That's <laughs> a joke. I hope the viewer at home got that one. But yeah, please explain what a yes man is. If that yeah, demonstration so yes didn't work. A, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a yes man is <laughs> someone who's always going to say yes no matter what. Even if the CEO's idea is terrible, if you're surrounding yourself with people that are just going to listen to you mm -hmm. and tell you, and just, you know, basically, basically blow smoke up your ass for just living your life, you're going yeah. to run the business to the ground. You need to have conflicting ideas. It was Charles, 
Kettering, I think his name was, who said, don't bring me anything but trouble to bring, his board. Don't bring me anything but trouble. So he wants trouble. He wants his board of directors to constantly challenge his ideas because he might think that this is where the company needs to go. This, mm-hmm. is, this, is, this is the new way to do it. But he needs conflicting ideas. He needs other people to bounce ideas off of and say, hey, that's not a good idea. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think feel like the- oftentimes we want like-minded people around us, but that's very interesting to have the total opposite as well. Huh. Yeah, I like because that. you need you need conflicting ideas to understand the marketplace, understand the customer, understand your staff, and understand the competitor. Yep. If you think you know everything just because you're ordained by God to know everything, <laughs> I guarantee you, you will run your company into the ground because you can't see what you don't know. You just can't. You need other points of view in order to get there. So don't, don't isolate yourself. Don't isolate yeah. yourself and surround yourself with like-minded people, but also people who are, who think differently from you. Yeah. I, I always like to cite Ray Dalio in this one, you know, Ray mm-hmm. Dalio, one of his big principles is open and honest communication. And Ray tells everyone, even the intern that he hires, that if Ray comes up with an idea, it is the intern's job as the intern who doesn't even have a place there to call stupid on his thing and say like, Hey, I don't think that's a good idea. And I think that's one of the best things that a good financial advisor. And this is the thing that I try to do as a financial advisor is when my clients ideas are not good is telling them, these are the reasons that it's not good. What some advisors will do is the clients like, Hey, I want to take out $300,000 because I want to buy this new house. And the, you know, or I want to take, I want to take all my money out so I can buy a house. And some advisors will be like, okay, cool. Let's do that. Rather than saying, before we do that, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. And there are some people that don't want to be, they don't want to be talked to that way. They only want you to be a yes man. But if you only want to be a yes man, if you only want to work with yes men, you're going to run yourself into the ground, both personally, financially, and your business. Okay. 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 That's not too bad. Can you think of anything in your life or maybe you worked for someone who was like a bad boss who thought it's my way or the highway? I can think of, I can think of a few times where that happened. Yeah, that's, so that's very it. frustrating. That's very annoying, very frustrating. Not necessarily a boss. I've actually had really, really great bosses and worked with really wonderful people. But um, definitely like coaches in the past, stuff like that, where it's like, no, 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 you have to do it this way. There's no other way. This is how it works. This is, you know, this is how we've been doing it for 40 years. We're going to do it this way till till I die. And then when you die, we're going to keep doing it till after that. It's like, no, no, no. It's like, we can, we can improve. We can change things the better yep. yeah that's it's annoying you know I, it, it's I, tough i i worked for, for once worked for a company that it was a uh, where they were constantly trying to reiterate constantly trying to grow i really had that startup mentality right mm-hmm. the reason that most startups you know most startups fail because it's, it's very hard to do but the ones that do succeed are ones that are constantly reiterating constantly trying to get better constantly trying to grow and this mm-hmm. company had that startup mentality yeah but what it failed is that the leader didn't have that so while the leader might say, hey, guys, we're trying to grow, we're trying to get better, come and tell me your ideas, when his yeah. employees would approach him or when their employees would approach him and say, hey, this is what we think is the next thing we should change here. The person would say, no, we're not going to do that. Go back to your desk. And they'll constantly say, like, we want to grow, but we don't want to listen to what you have to say. You yeah. want to listen to what you have to say, but only if what you have to say agrees with what, what, what we already said before. That's crazy. Okay. So definitely don't isolate yourself. Surround do yourself. Do not with isolate people. yourself. Yeah. Surround yourself with good people who are going to challenge you. <laughs> Number four, if you yes. want to fail your business, assume infallibility. Infallibility, basic. Yeah, I know it's a big word. Yeah, I'm like, what is that? There's too many L's in there. How many L's we got in there? Like four or five? Good Lord. Okay. There's, yeah, there's, a, there's three L's in infallibility. <laughs> but infallibility makes, basically means I can't make mistakes. You know, I'm never wrong. Gotcha. So if you ignore your mistakes, if you're pointing figures as a leader, you are a failure. I'm going to quote Jocko. You need Mm -hmm. to take extreme ownership of every single thing that you do. Even if you don't do it, even if it's one of your employees, you as the owner must take responsibility for it because it's your company first and foremost. So yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's extreme ownership for you right there. (laughs) There It it really is. I hate to, I hate to quote the man himself. If you don't know, go watch uh, anything Jocko. He's pretty scary looking. Okay. So assume infallibility. Gotcha. Gotcha. Managers, leaders of companies, ourselves, we need to acknowledge and learn from our mistakes. 
like I said earlier, it's okay to be wrong. It is not okay to stay wrong. I like, dude. So we need to put that up on the wall. That's a Chris Monzon <laughs> quote. Somebody clip that. Uh, Somebody clip that. Throw somebody it on clip there. that. Clip that and put it in a TikTok. Okay. It's okay to be wrong. It's not okay to stay wrong. I like that. I like that. A little trademark. From the, uh, okay. Interesting. And, okay. So it's almost like, you know, when you become the CEO, it's like basically so far what we got is don't have a God complex. First off, <laughs> <laughs> like don't isolate yourself. Don't assume that your, your way is the correct way all the time. And you're, you know, the, I, you know, I can't lose, you know? Okay. So, so far, so far, it's pretty good. I, I think for me, with the four of them so far, I like the isolate yourself one. I think it's really important. I, I know for me, oftentimes, it's it's nice having like-minded people around, but mm -hmm. it's important to have a balance of people so that you have a healthy perspective of how the things in the world are actually going, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that's where a lot of companies fail is they surround themselves with like people, you know? And, and if you surround yourself with like people, while everyone might be sitting around the table and all like, good job, buddy. And everyone's high-fiving. Yeah. But you're all high-fiving yourself into the ground because you don't see the big monster that's coming because no one's looking in that direction. <laughs> that's when you need somebody who might be a pain in the ass. who yeah. might be that person that's saying like, hey, you guys aren't looking at this right. And everyone might hate that person. But more often times than not, that person, while they might not be 100% right, they're at least looking in the right direction so that everyone can start to move in their direction there. It's always a balance. Everything in life is a balance. Yeah. And when it comes to infallibility, I think a lot, I relate a lot to investing. Even the best investors in the world are only right 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. The other 40% is a complete failure. So if you were to person that purchased a stock or purchase something and you were wrong on your thesis as to why you purchased it, hopefully you have a thesis, the reason that you're buying a stock and just buying it based <laughs> off of a, of a yeah, What's a thesis, but, Chris? What the heck is yeah. that word? What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean thesis? You don't just send it? Thesis? Uncle Tom told me to buy it. Dude, yeah. honestly, yeah. I mean, my thesis on Doge is going It's going north to the moon, my guy. Like, I don't it's know what you want from me. Rowan Kitty just, just tweeted about it. I don't need a thesis. That's my thesis. Yeah, exactly. but, I don't know what you're talking about. Harvard over here, man. Get out of here. It, if you are an actual investor, you actually do have a thesis about a company and you find out that your thesis is incorrect. You'd be silly to sit there and say, no, no, no this is my thesis. I have to stick with it. Yeah. That'd be the assuming infallibility. That means that well, as the world changed, you said, no, the world is wrong. I'm the right person. Yeah. I'm right. That's what's going to lead to failure in business, in life, in investing, in all things. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. And again, I love the parallels. I'm such a fan of the parallels because it's like, we're not just, we're not just talking about business here. We're talking about life. We're talking about life, man. I like, we're talking about yeah. practice. Um, so, 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 we're gonna here here on the five guys. We love to do some references every now and again. Hopefully you catch them. Hopefully you don't. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll we're always sending references. Okay, so so okay, I like this. Do you have a favorite so far? Um, I said we talk about our favorites on Five Friday feedback. Okay, I like it. I like it. I like. I'll see you there. See you there. Yeah, but we're not done yet. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're we're not even number five. But I'll tell you number five right now. Tell me if you want to fail your business. Play the game close to the foul. What do you mean by that? If you, you need to trust that the business is going to work itself. And if you're constantly bending the rules, if you're mm -hmm. constantly just on the outside of breaking the law, you will eventually lead your company to ruin. Okay. How many people do we know that is constantly just like, well, he's doing really, really well. He owns a business. Um, and I see him, he's taking all these cool tax deductions and he's doing all this fun stuff. He's writing off all these things and look how much money he has. And everyone watches that and it sounds good until the day the IRS audits you and yeah. then you're done. Yeah. And then you watch that person lose their house, lose all their stuff. Think of the Wolf of Wall Street playing close to the foul line. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that he did was illegal, but some of the stuff he did wasn't illegal. And even and enough of the things that he was doing that wasn't illegal, once added up, became illegal. Like Icarus, flying too close to the <laughs> sun. Okay, okay. So, I mean, for a guy like me, I'm a pretty straight shooter. I don't, I don't even go over the speed limit that much. I mean, I do have a Buick, so it's not hard to get up to the speed limit. But, um, or it is hard. But, so, just playing within the rules. Trying not, don't bend yeah. them. Don't be getting sketchy. Basically, the foundation of business is trust okay. and, and studies show. And I, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, well, don't worry about that because you want to get ahead first. But studies show that good businesses have mm -hmm. good cultures and those mm -hmm. good cultures 
outperform in the long term. And business should not be a short-term endeavor. Just like life is not a short-term endeavor. Investing, not a short-term endeavor. If you want to fail, go ahead and try to do it quickly. Yeah. But if you want to succeed in the long term, you need to work every single day. And the only way to stick around and have that staying power is to embrace a culture of win-win in business. And in order to do that, you need to be a trusted person in business. So if you're playing close to the foul line, you're not going to keep playing. I think of it like if I'm in jujitsu, right? And in jujitsu, as you go up in different belts, you can only do certain techniques. So at my current belt, I can't do heel hooks. I can't do things that will break people's knees. I can do it. Like physically, can I do it? Yes, I can do it. But mm -hmm. the rules that we play in whenever I go to a tournament is we don't go after people's knees. You can go after the ankle, you can go after other parts, but you're not going to break people's knees because if you mess up, you're really going to do it wrong. You're going to do somebody really dirty. But if I showed up at a tournament and I was constantly like coming close to breaking the knee, but not breaking it in order to go for something else, eventually I'd get called out and I'd get kicked out of the tournament mm. because these are the rules that we're playing by. Yeah. Don't keep on skimming on the rules. And even if I did win the tournament, everyone's going to know me as that asshole because I'm trying <laughs> to break everyone's knee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I like that. So number six. Step number six. Don't take the time to think. We do like thinking. Thinking is very important. I think all the time. Yeah. So you want to go? I'm sure I know each one of these, you had some bullet points for them. What do you got for this one? Yeah. Businesses often fail due to a lack of thoughtful decision-making. How many times have we, or I guess if you are a business owner, have you just gone in a random direction with the hope that it's going to work out? Yeah. Without thinking through second order, third order, fourth order consequences. I talk constantly about second order consequences to your action. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, maybe I decide, or it's late at night, 11 PM. I'm like, man, I really want some chicken nuggets. And first order consequences, I'm going to go and I'm going to get myself some chicken nuggets. But second order consequence to that without thinking it through is now I'm going to have indigestion and I'm going to have trouble sleeping tonight because I ate some crap food right before bed. So you have to think through these things and say, maybe the chicken nuggets aren't worth it. Maybe what I'll do is drink some water or eat a salad or eat something better, or maybe just not eat it at all. That'd be my recommendation. But, you know, think through your first impulse. Your first impulse is often wrong because it's your first impulse. It's mm -hmm. the thing that's going to keep you alive right now. But what's going to keep you alive right now Maybe at the detriment of what's going to keep you alive in the long term. Okay. So don't just think through this first step, think through multiple steps down the line. Yeah. I mean, think, think like about, that. think about as us as like managers at this company, how often do emotional biases affect our judgment? If we, if we weren't logical about it, we didn't think through things. Yeah. You know, if, if something went wrong, rather than me going out and like screaming at you or you're screaming at me because something didn't go right, we think through it. What would be yeah. the, what would be the consequence of me screaming at you? Absolutely not. As a manager, if you're screaming, you are failing. It does not make you powerful. It makes you look silly. Yeah. It makes you look weak and you're not respected. Nope. I mean, how many times can you think of someone yelling at you that after they yelled at you, you're like, that guy, that guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> I want to be like him when I grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Never once. Never once. Yeah. That's an interesting yeah. take. That's it. So, so stop, think, and, and don't just think one step ahead. Think. 20 steps ahead, how it's going to play out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Taking additional time to think on something is like an investment in the future. Yeah. You are investing your time right now and thinking about it before you go down a path of doing something silly. I mean, how many people will think like, oh, I want to start a business. I'm going to go take out this loan. I'm going to do all these things and I'm going to just get it started. I'm going to start the business. I'm going to figure it out. Where had they talked to somebody or had they actually thought about it, they would have said, before I start this business and put myself $100,000 into debt, what's my marketing plan? What's mm -hmm. my plan to break even? What's all these things? And think through the consequences. If I do do this business, what is that going to mean for my family? What's this going to mean for my life? Instead of just saying, this guy started a business and it's working out for him, I should do that too. You're not in the same place as that person. We never are. Okay. Okay. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. It's oftentimes we think that the world is like super fast paced, but it's like, it's important to take time and like you said, just think and, and realize your decisions. I like that. Yeah. I think the, the most important thing that a CEO or a business owner can do is get out of the day-to-day -day minutia and take the 10,000 foot view. That is mm -hmm. the role of the CEO. That is the yeah. role of my, me and our job. That's the role of everything. That's the role of a person, the head of the household is to not get bogged down in the minutia or the emotional feelings of what's going on right now, but to say, 
10,000 foot view. This is where we want to go. And I think yeah. a lot about this with like kids, because right now my wife and I, we're, think, we're, we're trying to have kids. And I think about, is that, is there, do I always need to be fighting with our child in order to, or our future child in order to move them in a direction? Or can I just say we're, we're moving in the right direction? Not everything needs to be perfect if we're moving in the right direction. Hmm. So I have not, to think that through too. Not everything needs to be perfect if we're moving in the right direction. I like that. Dude, we got to somebody clip that one too. That's a good one too. That, that's a good one. I like that one. It doesn't, wow, that's a good one. That's a real, I like that one. It doesn't matter if we're not doing everything correct as long as we're moving in the perfect. right direction. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. 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 Not, not correct. Yeah, okay. Okay. Because okay. I mean, how, how often do we, do we sit there and we say, before I start, I need to have mm -hmm. the perfect plan. Yep. You're never going to have the perfect plan. The only way to find the perfect plan is to start, start mm -hmm. messy, and you will discover the perfect plan. Only with hindsight, though, do you know what the perfect plan would have been. Yeah. And even if you knew that starting back then, you wouldn't have followed through with it because yeah. it wouldn't have made sense to you because the world doesn't make sense to anyone. No, that's number solid. seven, I, I think you're going to like number seven. This, okay. is, uh, this is, I know I said we talked about it on Friday, but this is one of my favorite ones. Okay. If you want to fill your business, put all your faith in experts and outside consultants. <laughs> yeah, I could see why you would like this one. I could see that. I could see that. Go into detail on that one. So if you risk relying solely on quote unquote experts and consultants, mm -hmm. you risk missing the force of the trees. You as a business owner know your business inside and out better than anyone else, better than anyone else. And I like to tell you a story about Coca-Cola. Okay. Coca-Cola back in, I think it was the 1970s, they went ahead and released a new brand of Coke called New Coke. Mm -hmm. And the I've reason that they that. did this is because they brought in an outside consulting firm who said, people don't like Coke. And what you need to do is revamp your Coca-Cola um, recipe. So they went ahead and did a bunch of research and they found that inside the research that the new people or everyone who was studied, everyone liked new Coke better than old Coke. And um, Don Keogh, the author of this book, it was against his morals and it was kind of against his thought of like, I don't know if I want to impact this iconic brand and change the recipe that has been there for its whole life. But he went against his better judgment and he listened to the consultants. He listened to the quote unquote experts who knew the business better than him from outside. And what ended up happening when they released New Coke, there was a public backlash where everyone said, we hate New Coke. It was so bad that they were, that people were harassing delivery drivers, the company stock plummeted. And then eventually they had to recall all of New Coke and then go back to New, go back to the original Coke, the Coke that we all know and love today, just normal Coca-Cola. So sometimes when you bring in outside consulting, they're going to go ahead and screw everything up. And I think one of the best quotes regarding this is from Malcolm Forbes. And I don't know if you know who Malcolm Forbes is, but he is the publisher of Forbes magazine. Hmm. He was the guy that okay. started Forbes magazine. Anyone who says businessmen deal in facts, not fiction, has never read a five-year projection. Whenever you deal with experts, they're looking at five-year projections, they're doing all this stuff. But if you look at a five-year projection, you will realize that everything they said was wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so true. It's always true. Never, I don't know about you, but I've never mapped out five years from now and uh, gotten it correct. Everything goes into turmoil, like basically the second or third month in, it's just chaos. Interesting. And I'm going to give you one other quote that's really, okay. really good because the reason that most people end up finding experts or consultants is because they're trying to take their business to the next level. And these businesses, these consulting firms, what are they doing? Their incentive is to get you to buy their thing because that's how they make money. If you don't know what you're trying to do and you're trying to look, is this person doing what's right? Look at their incentives. Incentives dictate pretty much everything. I learned that from Charlie Munger. Mm -hmm. Just like from Charlie Munger, here's a quote from him. I have never seen the management consultant report as long as I have lived that didn't end with the following paragraph. What this situation really needs is more management consulting. Never once, I have always turned to the last page. Of course, Berkshire doesn't hire them. So I only have uh, this sort of voyeuristic bias sometimes with nonprofits where some idiots hire one mm. people hire. And I think about this. Like I remember working with, um, when I was trying to, to start my business, I was looking for ways to generate leads. And one yeah. of the best ways that people do it is through Dave Ramsey leads. And I'm nothing against Ramsey. He's not my person, but if you like him, that's totally cool for me. But Dave Ramsey's leads, you have to become a certified investor pro or whatever. That's part of his program. Mm -hmm. And then, They'll give you leads from people that go to his website to be like an advisor. And they say they're fiduciary advisors. It's really whoever pays the most amount of money, just so you guys know. 
um, they are vetted, but they're not vetted super deeply. Yeah. And then at the end of it, after you get all this and you're getting the leads from Dave Ramsey's company, you also have to go through Dave Ramsey training. And Dave Ramsey training is basically him telling you how to run your company. And Interesting. Then there was one time where Dave comes on, or not Dave, but you know, I'm watching a video of Dave and Dave basically says, I don't listen to anyone tell me how to run my company because they don't know what it is that I do. So Dave's own company had no idea what his employees were doing by trying to tell other people how to run their businesses. That's the stupidest thing ever. It makes no sense. What's huh. their incentive? Yeah. Their incentive is to keep you around, keep you paying them. So you keep on getting leads and quote unquote, make your business the same way as theirs, but everyone's business is different. Mm -hmm. And now they're assuming that their one way is right, that they're invaluable, that they have isolated themselves and they're inflexible. And if you only listen to those people, the people that tell you what to do, you're going to be failing at some of the other ones. I'm not saying don't never listen to outside consulting. You should listen to people, but you have to take with a grain of salt because they don't mm -hmm. know everything and neither do you. I think that's the, that's kind of the catch 22 about being in a business is like, you think, you know, more than, you know, and then as soon as the tide comes out or it gets low tide, you realize that you're like, oh, wow, I did not know as much as I thought I knew. I'm, yep. I'm out here. What I think it was like a Warren Buffett quote. No, do you know the one I'm talking about? Only when the tide goes out, do you see who's swimming naked? <laughs> yes, exactly. That's it. That's it. No, I love it's, it. it's exactly that. Only when you're out there and you think like I'm so smart. I mean, think about the investing. Mm -hmm. How often in investing do you think I'm so right? Look at I bought this stock and it's up twenty percent, even though you have no idea that everything's going wrong. Recently, I had a I had a friend of mine who reached out to me and said, "Hey, I found this new company. It's paying a seven percent dividend a month." And he's telling me, and he's telling me like, I bought into it. It's doing really, really well. And I'm like 7% dividend a month. Send me what that is. Yeah. So he sends it to me, I look into it. And what it was, it was a derivative ETF. And basically what they were doing is they were cannibalizing their own stock. So every month he was getting 7% in a dividend. That 7% was coming from the value of the stock. So if you had his oh. company that was worth, I don't know, let's just say a hundred dollars. Yeah. The stock is worth a hundred dollars. Every month he was getting a 7% dividend. So he was giving $7 to his, to his account saying like, here's your dividend. But now the stock, once it revalues is now at $93 because hmm. whenever there's a dividend, it's taken from the stock value. So yes, he was making a 7% dividend, but he was robbing from his left hand to give to his right hand. Yeah. So once I explained that to him, he was like, oh shoot. And he got out of it, but this is what we need to do. We cannot just listen to people because they are outside consultant, especially don't do it with investing. Mm -hmm. You need to listen to a professional. Don't listen to the guy who is just out there at the barbecue or the guy around the water cooler. You know, don't listen to Chuck at the water cooler. Chuck doesn't know. Chuck and if Chuck knew. did know, Chuck would not be working <laughs> at where you're working. He would not be near the damn water cooler. So true, dude. And you know, it's funny. Like this is another one of those wonderful things where it's like, uh, if you don't take advice from someone whose life you don't want, you know, it's like, it's the same thing uh, in business. It's like, if this guy isn't running what you're running, should you be taking his advice? You know, it's yeah. one thing to take advice from someone who's above you, you know, say we're, you know, we're a, a podcast, we have 500 followers, right? And we're taking advice from someone who has a podcast who has 50,000 followers. Well, obviously that makes more sense. But if there's a new guy giving us suggestions on how to grow, it's like, but you're not practicing what you preach. Yep. What are we doing here? I'll listen to him. I'll listen to him and I'll say like, okay, cool. Thanks for taking me that. But I'm going to take, I'm going to put my own feelings and what I think before there, before the quote unquote expert who may not know. And I've noticed this before. I recently had a client or a prospect who was trying to, who was between me and another advisor. Mm -hmm. And they told me that this other, there were not a large account, mind you, nothing, nothing huge. But this person was like, I have another person who's telling me that they can guarantee or not guarantee, but they said they will outbeat the market every single year. And then they have a proven track record of doing that. And I said, okay, so you have an advisor who claims to have been in the market every single year. Why is that person going after you? Yeah. If this person knows what's going to happen tomorrow, they know what the stocks are going to do tomorrow. Why are they a financial advisor? They should be on an island somewhere, you know, begging in buku bucks if they know what the future holds. Yep. No one knows what the future holds. And when I told them that, when I told them, I don't know what the future holds. What I can do is try to guarantee or try to minimize risk to the best of my ability. Yep. 40% of the time, I will be wrong. But if someone says they are right 100% of the time, they are false. Yeah. You know, I, I took a course. I took a, 
you know, it's like one of these like live streams where it's like they try and sell you something. Where it's like, we're going to teach you all about this thing. And I was like, OK, I'm going to sign up for it. It was free. So I was like, why not? I can learn something new about it. And it was has to do with a certain form of investing. And um, at the end of it, like he's like, there's only 10 spots available if you want to join my community, you know, all that stuff for twenty five ninety nine. And it's just like, um, I was just like, dude, in your videos, you have a $5 million yacht and a $25 million mansion and like six supercars. Like, I, I get it's a business, but it's like, you know, why do you need me to, why do you only have 10 spots and need me to give you a thousand more dollars? Yeah. You're, you're exactly, like, you're exactly you claim right. to make a million a month or something crazy like that. I'm like, but what is 2,500 going to do for you? Why and he's exactly like, I'll, right. I'll give you my proprietary software. I'm like, why though? Like, why? I, I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It smelled fishy, and if it smells fishy, it's probably something fishy going on. Follow but, your gut, man. Yeah. Honestly, follow. And unfortunately, I've fallen into those traps. I once paid an ungodly sum amount of money to do an investing course mm -hmm. that was all about investing. And don't get me wrong, I learned a lot, and yeah. there's still stuff that I use to this day. You know, it taught me a lot of different things, but. Yeah. It was not the end all be all. It was not the thing that got me to financial independence like I thought it was going to be. The thing mm -hmm. that got me there was hard work, consistency over time. Yeah. Anyone that's trying to sell you a get rich quick scream. And you want it to, you know? It's like, oh, man, it'd be so nice. Of course we want. It. We all want the easy fix. You know, if I told you, hey, you know, in order to get fit, you need to show up to the gym every single day. You need to yep. be consistent on working out, consistent on your diet, consistent on eating. And then there was another guy standing right next to me. He said, no, 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 don't do that. Just give me $100 to take this pill. You're going to go for the $100, take the pill. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, well, that guy's gone. Yeah. And you're at $100. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So let's, let's, let's get back on to it. Are we at number eight? We are at number eight. Okay. Businesses that are guaranteed to fail love bureaucracy. Mm. Committee approach, groupthink, all of these things is what leads companies to never actually getting things. Done. Yeah, so it's kind of like uh, mucking up the business. Everything is moving a lot slower than it needs to. Yeah, correct. And this and, and this is this is completely contrary to number two, right? Number two yeah. was you must be flexible to have a successful business. Be inflexible. And now we're saying you also need to love your bureaucracy, the dichotomy. If you're on one extreme of I'm never going to change, but you're also on the extreme of we can't change because of this bureaucracy. Yeah, that's that's where things are going to fail. Hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. So a good example of this of bureaucracy is whenever Berkshire Hathaway acquires a company, mm -hmm. one of the reasons that all companies love being acquired by Berkshire is because Warren, once he takes over the company, does nothing when it comes to management. He leaves pretty much everything alone and just lets them continue to run their business the way that they do. He doesn't add a more bureaucracy. What typically happens when private equity comes in and they purchase a new company, look at Red Lobster as a new example of this. They'll come in there, they'll muck up the waters, they'll make everything so difficult that nothing ever gets done, which eventually leads to the collapse of the company and then the eventual more money for the private equity company because they suck the life out of companies. Mm. Um, sometimes, not all times. Sometimes, yeah, times. not always, not always. Okay, 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 interesting. So, so, so kind of keep what, it more efficient and, and cut down on the bureaucracy? Yep, and I would okay. say when in doubt, Focus on the customer service and decision-making efficiencies. Focus on those things. Keep the customer first, like Jeff Bezos says, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. I like that. That's easy. Simple enough. Yeah. Um, you know, going back, going back real quick to, to play the game close to the foul line, because yeah. I know we didn't really like go too deep into that. I want to go back for one second on that. Okay. There's a Warren Buffett quote on this that said, you're, if you're torn about a business decision, Assume that it will be written inside of the front front page of your mother's um, newspaper tomorrow, and then make your choice. Dude. So if you're torn, should I do this or not do this in my business? If it was put out in front of a first page and your mom read that, would you be proud of it? If it's a no, don't do it. If it's a yes, go for it. Wow. That's a good one. Dude, you're dropping gems today. You're dropping gems today. That's a good one. That's a really good one. And that, again, that goes for everything in life. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if you're drinking at a bar and you say, I can drive, it's like, would your mother be okay with reading this in the newspaper tomorrow? That you drove yeah. a little bit buzzed? It's like, wow, no, she would not be happy with that. Interesting. That's a yeah. good one. 
That's a what's that old Miyota Mikashi? What's that old Miyota Mikashi quote? One who knows the way broadly will see it in all things. Yes. Yes. Yep. The the seven deadly a circle. What, what am I missing? Seven deadly somethings. The book. I don't know. Rogan loves that book. Um. Okay. Seven deadly sins. No, that that doesn't sound I don't right. Think it's the seven deadly sins. <laughs> that, that that's, 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 I looked up <laughs> seven deadly, and that's the that's what came up. Seven deadly. I don't know. But okay, okay. Getting back on track. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Let's um, move on to uh to to number nine. Number nine. Let's do it. Number nine is if you want your business to fail, send mixed messages. Gotcha. Clear communication is the key within a company. That yeah. means from multiple levels, from management to its employees and from the company to its end users. You have to ensure that employees are aligned with the company's goals. And if you're sending mixed messages about what this company stands for, if you're saying we only stand for being the healthiest company in the world. We want we want America to be to be healthy. Mm-hmm. But you are McDonald's. You are sending <laughs> yeah. two mixed messages, and people don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and again, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue bringing it up and harping on it. But this goes with everything in life. The clearer you are, the more concise you are, the better you have to succeed. And I, I read this one thing. I don't know where I read it, but it was basically saying that if you can't explain your plan to a five year old probably not a good plan because it needs to be as simple as possible. And I always loved that. I always remembered that. I'm like, that makes sense. The more complex, the more chances it has to fail. And I like that one. I can get behind that. You want to hear a good uh, Charlie Munger quote that kind of reminds me of what you just said there? Send it. What do you got? A majority, a majority of life's errors are caused by forgetting what one is really trying to do. A majority of life's errors are caused by forgetting what one's, what, what one is really trying to do. Okay. So if your goal is to, I don't know, what, what's, what's our goal here at the five guys? Our goal is to empower Spread good knowledge, empower people, nuance conversations, people to achieve financial independence. Yeah. If our goal was to tell people to achieve financial independence, the right way of getting there. And mm-hmm. I only, we only brought on people that taught day trading, yeah. only taught how to do crypto. Yeah. We would be sending mixed messages and we would lose trust. And that's something I think that we are not, that's the reason one of our, one of the reasons that are we're taking so long to grow is because yeah. we're not bringing on the sexy person who's telling you, "Oh, do this, do that tomorrow, and you're going to be rich." Yeah. It's not sexy what we're doing. We're telling yeah. people that through hard work, consistency, and effort, you will be successful, and that is not a sexy thing to sell somebody. No, but at the end of the day, I think that we're still going to win because we're sticking with truth and we're trying to tell people this is what it takes to be successful. I know it's hard. I've been there. I still am there, and you're never going to get away from that. And the sooner you can accept that, the sooner you can start moving forward. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, I don't, I don't know what Chris is talking about. I, I feel like we got two sexy guys up here talking about sexy ideas, <laughs> but yeah, it, it does take hard work. There's no, as much as I would love it, Chris and I both would love it. A nice, you know, legit get rich quick scheme, but it just doesn't, it's not what we're selling here. Um, we're just selling the, the sure thing, the tried and trusted the true ways to get wealthy and become financially independent, you know? Yeah. And I wish and, it was a fast process, but. And the funny doesn't... thing about the get rich, the get rich quick schemes is yeah. it does get somebody rich. It gets the person that started it rich. Yeah. Everyone else though loses. Yeah. yeah. I agree. But everyone looks at the person that started it and goes, wow, that person became rich. It's like, yeah, because you were the, you were the person they were selling to. Yeah. You were the target. You made them rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the sad part about it. You're getting the reverse. It's not working out in your favor. It's going the total opposite direction. I'm getting more poor and they're getting more mm-hmm. rich. Like I'm getting yep. the definition of a scam. And, and I can't figure it out. I, I keep on know. putting money into this every single month and it just keeps on going the opposite way. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. It okay. So, so number 10, <laughs> yeah. if you want to fail, businesses that want to fail for number 10 are afraid of the future. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So we got to be not afraid of the future. Show no fear. Fearless even. Okay. Yeah. Fearless. I think when it comes down to it, optimism is the passion for success. Optimism is the passion for success. You need to be optimistic. Pessimistic environments are important too. You need to have that balance, but I can't walk up as the leader of a company and be like, guys, I don't think we're going to get to our goals, but we should still try. Okay. 
No, no one's going to try. I'm going to say, guys, I know we can do this. We've got to put in hard work. We've got to put in effort. Well, we're going to make it there. And I have mm-hmm. to believe that. Because if I believe it, then we're going to actually do it. But if I go yeah. up there and say, I don't, I don't know, guys, like the future is pretty, pretty, pretty looking pretty bad. Um, but let's just, let's try it. Let's see what happens. I don't know. We're probably going to fail, but let's just, let's go for it. Just send it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. one that out, yeah. <laughs> then that's, what's going to happen. You were going to create a reality by saying, oh, it's okay if we fail because it's already been said that we're going to fail. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to be encouraging, but also, you know, not living in la la land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, a dichotomy, right? Mm-hmm. But this is, this is one of the biggest things for, you can't always be afraid of the future. And when you think about investing, I know we always try, I'm trying to bring this back to investing because we are the five guys and it's about investments and being good with money. What things are you going to watch? Are you going to watch things about how the market's going to fail tomorrow, about how these companies are all going to do really, really poorly? Or are you going to watch the thing that's going to say, yeah, tomorrow the stock market's probably going to be at all time high again. Yeah. You don't, we you haven't, don't know. You don't know, but we have an instinctual bias to focus on the negative. Because it kept us alive at one point. If there was two people and we're on the Serengeti and you hear a rustle in the bush, the person that said, I think that's a tiger and ran away, survived while the person who went, oh, look at that rock, died. So <laughs> we are all evolutionarily bound to focus on the negative. But in order to move forward, in order to progress, you must also be important that you are being optimistic about the future. Mm-hmm. If you think about your life, if you're thinking 20, 60, 30 years from now, when I'm close to retirement, if you're looking at that life and at 70 years old or 60 years old and say, I'm never going to make it to retirement, I'm probably going to die before I even make it there. Then you're never going to set yourself up for the day that you do get there. And now you find that you're screwed because you screwed yourself over. Yeah. You need to have passion for the future. You cannot be afraid of the future. You need to move boldly into that dark night. And I think that's what's so scary is, especially in finance for people who don't have someone to like hold their hand as well. It's like, it's 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 scary because you're it is. you're dealing with your whole life you know in regards to like you are. finances and whatnot and you know i how do you think is there a better way to like get through that i think you need to educate yourself you need to keep on getting better if you don't know what you're doing find someone who can help you walk through that because you're right it's messy it feels bad it feels terrible for the first time in history we have all of the information at our fingertips with the internet And even with all that information, we are dumber than we have ever been because we have too much information and everything is conflicting to one another. And no one knows what is truth, what is folly. And of course, when it comes to money, it feels bad. Mm -hmm. Money is at its core, a trade of your life energy, your time for this money thing. And when you're going and you're putting your money into the stock market, you don't understand what's happening. You see it, you put it in today, it went down 5% tomorrow. That's 5% of your life that you just saw dwindle yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. That's why, that's why people get so emotionally attached to this. That's why it feels so bad. It's because it's your life. Yep. It's your energy. The one renewable source that we are, the one non-renewable source is our time. You're losing all of that by, and unfortunately when you're listening to get which quick schemes, you're just constantly wasting your life. And yeah, maybe you put your money into the stock market and it goes <laughs> down by 5% tomorrow. I don't know what the future holds. No one does, but on a long enough timeline, We hope that history continues to repeat itself and that it will be up. Do you think in the future that America, that the stock market, that all of these things are going to be in a worse situation than we are today? And I know that things are bad. Things are turbulent. Things have always been turbulent. If you think about 20 years ago or 100 years ago today, we were in a world war or not today, but like in this year, we were in a world war. We didn't know that the future held what it does today. Mm -hmm. In another 100 years, I don't know where we're going to be but I have to be optimistic that's going to be in a better place. Yeah. yeah. And that's the reason we invest on the long term. We don't invest for tomorrow. If you need money for to take little Timmy to the doctors, you're not investing that money tomorrow. Poor little Timmy. He's not going to make it. Um, do we, I know oftentimes with these books, there's like a bonus or a, a key takeaway from the author that, you know, 10, ten is, that's not a lot. You know, sometimes they add a, a little bit. And do you, do you have an extra one that you'd like to add maybe personally or anything like that? I, uh, yeah, there, there's not one in the book, but I will okay. offer one person. Okay. If you want to lose in life and in business, lose the passion for work. To retire is to expire. And I know that our goal in financial dependence is to eventually get to the point where we no longer have to work for money. But that doesn't mean that you stop working. You continue working on what brings you passion in life. And what your passion is, I can't tell you. 
That's something you need to discover for yourself. But once you find it and once you find your mission, it's going to get you up every single day and you're going to be happy doing it. The moment that you say, I've finally reached this magical milestone and I'm done is the day that it's over. Yeah. It's the day that you expire because Absolutely. life is not meant to be lived. You have to live. You have to grow. You have to constantly be trying to make an impact on other people in their lives. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Well, with that being said, let's get our call to action going. And uh... yeah, I, I would honestly, I would encourage the listener to read Don Keogh's book for a deeper insight. Again, the book is called The Ten Commandments of Business Failure. Um, mm -hmm. It actually came out, I think it's it's close to 20 years old now. So oh, we're wow. soon going to be able to smack that, that 20 year sticker on it. Um, I think it's like 18 or 19 years old, but you know, these, these concepts, these 10 business failures, they haven't changed and they're not going to change in the future. They're always going to remain those exact same things. And while I may not be able to tell you exactly what's going to make your business successful, I may not be able to tell you what exactly is going to make you successful in investing or in life, but I can tell you if I invert the problem, mm -hmm. what's going to lead you to failure. Absolutely. And this book will tell you exactly what's going to lead you to failure. And if you listen to that and you try to avoid these things and you really try to recognize the red flags and the common factors of business failure, it will help prevent your own losses in your business in investing and in life. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little recap of the 10, the 10, you know, what are we talking about? 10 commandments of business failure. I thought it was pretty interesting. So definitely. Not just some stuff for business, but also for life. I know on Friday, we're going to be talking a little bit about which ones were our favorite and going not so much in detail, but the Cliff Notes version of it and whatnot. But um, yeah, hopefully by Friday, when you come hang out again, you took a little bit of action like Chris was talking about. And yeah, I definitely encourage all of you to read the book and, you know, maybe something you can throw on Audible or pick up at your library or Something like that. It is on Audible. That's it how I Audible. do it. So yep. It is on Audible. We love we love a good Audible. We love a good Audible. But um, yeah, guys, with that being said, uh, anything else, Chris? Anything you want to add? No, guys, just please like, subscribe, leave a comment for the algorithm. But most importantly, remember the fee for the show. If you enjoyed today's episode, which if you're still here, I hope you did. Yeah. Please tell a friend about the Fi Guys. Bring someone along for this journey of financial dependence because it's so much more fun if you go along with a friend than going alone. And with that, we will see you at Five Friday Feedback. Have a great week. Later, Later guys. Peace. This video podcast is sponsored by Mons on Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.